Segundo o pitete do amor. Segundo o pitete do amor. There is a nature that man possesses. Man was born with a nature. And the nature was the nature of the supernatural. The Bible says in the Garden of Eden, God will come. And when he comes, he will speak to man. And man and God will have an interaction. Why? Because heaven and heart was so close together that there was no distance. Therefore, man was made originally to be supernatural. Man was made originally to be able to contact. And to be able to touch God. Listen, dear friend, Christianity is a supernatural religion. It is a way to live supernaturally. Christianity is about power. The gospel is about power. Witnessing is about power. Is somebody listening to me? And until we return to true Christianity full of power, we will not see souls saved. We will not see lives transformed. And communities will not change. I know I tell you to invite people to church, but I've come to tell you don't invite people to church again. Because after now, God will bring his own people. And what you have seen today, you cannot but tell of it. Today, your life changed. I continue. Christianity is not philosophy. <laughs> it is not an alternative way of living. It is not mental ascent. It is living the Christ life and living by the grace and the power of the gospel. Listen to this. A gospel that is devoid of power is an aberration. It is more like having a surgeon who cannot perform surgery. 
an accountant who cannot balance book is an anomaly. It's not supposed to happen. And I believe we have lived in anomaly long enough. I believe we have coped with darkness, poverty, pain, and sickness long enough. It is time to break the yoke of depression and walk in freedom. It is time for us to walk as we are called even to walk by Christ Jesus. Addictions will give way when we begin to live as Christ has called us. Sickness will go when we begin to move as Jesus has called us. Pain will become a pastime when we begin to walk according to the liberty in which Christ has called us. I've come to introduce to you, ladies and gentlemen, this morning, the Christ life. The life that is abundant in Christ, that is bigger and greater than what you are living in right now. Enough of living on the edges. I hear God say to me, come into the waters. I hear God say to me, tell them to step into the river. There is more. There is more. There is more. There is more. I hear God say there is more. <laughs> Who wants the handkerchief? There is more. I hear God say what? There is more. I want to step into the rivers if that's your heart cry this morning. I want to step into the rivers. I want to step into more. God says to tell you it is time for more. I heard the Lord say to me, you have only one mandate in 2024. I want you to raise a supernatural army for me. Raise a people who understands and believe that because they have me, they are unstoppable. Because they have me, nothing can stop them now. What is the supernatural? Follow me very closely, dear friends. The term supernatural is not in the Bible. It's not in the Bible. But it abounds in everyday conversation. As we speak, we talk about the supernatural. Therefore, since it is foreign to scriptures, theologians uh, and Bible scholars um, define in how they define these statements and they disagree in how they define the word supernatural. But supernatural is something that we are so used to in Christian space that we talk about it so much, it's almost uh, in our regular time. It's like the word devotion. You know, the word devotion is not also a biblical time. You will find that word also in scriptures. But you see, just like the word devotion uh, is also the word supernatural. Uh, uh, but, but what does that word, what does it mean? What does it mean? When Christian says, and when I speak about the supernatural, what do I speak of? Number one, what does it mean? It means above and beyond the natural. Somebody needs to write that down. Above and beyond the natural. That's what it means. This is the realm where God operates. It is the realm where heaven and earth intermingles. The realm of interaction between God and man. Acts chapter 14 verse 9. The Bible says uh, in Acts chapter 14 and then verse 9. The Bible says Paul was in a place, a certain place. And then after he and Barnabas had preached, scripture records uh, that he perceived that the man had faith to be healed. My question is, how do you perceive someone has faith in the natural? How do you see that someone has faith in the natural? How can you tell that someone has faith to be healed? But because he was walking in the supernatural, Bible says, he says, Bible says he perceived he had faith. Then he told the man who is lame in his feet, arise and walk. Scripture says the man began to walk from that very moment. Those who saw him, they said, the gods have come down to us. <laughs> They called him Zeus. Why? Because he moved in a realm that is above the natural. It is abnormal to nature. That someone who is lame in his feet, you tell the person, stand and walk. And the person began to walk. But that is the essence of the supernatural. Number two, what is the supernatural? The supernatural is often associated with divine interventions, miracles, and the power of God. There shall be signs and wonders today. There shall be signs and wonders today. Listen, the Bible says the supernatural is the finger of God. Remember in, Act, in Exodus chapter 8, Moses went to them. He said, God has told me to let his people go that they may serve me. And Moses, what, Pharaoh said, what do you have to show? And then the Bible says he chewed down his rod. He became a snake. The magicians and the astrologers also did the same thing. A time came, he actually made gnats to be upon people. 
scripture records that they couldn't do that. And they came out with a conclusion. They said, this can only be by the finger of God. So what is the supernatural? It is the essence of God upon a life. It is the finger of God. The intervention of God even upon lives. It is God's intervention in the affairs of men. Whether you have come to this service today and you say, I need God's intervention. I've got good news for you. God is in the business of interfering in the acts and in the ways of men. The Bible records a story that Luke alone recorded. I don't know why he recorded Maybe because he was a doctor. But scripture records that Luke alone record this, recorded this story in Luke chapter 7. And you begin to read it from verse 11. Bible records very clearly and it was very straight. Uh, scripture says there was a widow. <laughs> that the name widow means he'd already lost, she's already lost her husband. A scripture records that that widow was going to actually bury her only son so that she was bereaved, bereaved. I mean, that's double jeopardy. She had nothing more to live for. And scripture says at that time, her hope was gone, her future was gone, everything she had expected to live by had gone. But then she encountered Jesus. The widow of Nahin encountered Jesus just the same way you will encounter Jesus this morning. And scripture says every dead vision became alive. Every dead. The man rose from the dead. Ow! <laughs> because Jesus is passing this way. He's passing this way. He's passing this way. Jesus is passing this way. He's passing this way today because when Jesus passes by you the supernatural happens number three the supernatural is a sign an act that cannot be explained by natural laws yet it cannot be denied Isaiah said in Isaiah chapter 7 verse 14 he said, the Lord himself shall give a sign. A virgin shall be with a child. A virgin shall be with a child. That's against natural law. But when Jesus was to come, Mary gave birth. You call it the miraculous conception. <laughs> Mary gave birth. How can this thing be? How? The supernatural. You can't explain it. It's above the law of man. God will do certain things in your life that will be above the law of man. People will say, how can this happen? But they will not be able to doubt the essence of what has happened to you. Because they will know something has happened. They will know it didn't used to be like this. No, it wasn't like this. It wasn't like this. And then number four, what is the supernatural? It is that which relates to an order of existence beyond the visible, observable universe. There is an order of existence. There is a world beyond what you see. There is a world where principalities and powers reign. There is a world where angels live. There is a world where demons and devils live. There is a world where these people live. Have you no people beings live? There is an order beyond what you can see. Sweetheart, there is a word above and beyond what you can see. Somebody say, if I can't see, then it is not working. It is not there. Sweetheart, you fell in love, but you have never seen love. Microbes are real, but you cannot see them with the naked eyes, but they are real. There are a lot of things in our world that we cannot see, but they are real. Listen, the spiritual world is a real world. Let no one fool you. Devils have power. Let no one deceive you. Demons have power. Let no one deceive you. The supernatural is a real world. Is somebody listening to me this morning? Can I quickly share with you the two sources of the supernatural? Number one, the first source of the supernatural is God. God. If you are really going to enter and transcend into the supernatural, the first means of transcending is God. The first means of assessing is God. And thou shalt receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost is come upon you. When will I receive power? When the Holy Ghost has come. When the Holy Ghost has come. Therefore, if I have received the Holy Ghost, I have come into power. That's what our scripture says. You will receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. After that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. 
The first source is God, and then the second source is Satan. We live in a world where people doubt the essence and the reality of the Holy Spirit, but they do not doubt the reality of evil spirits. In a matter of days in America, they will celebrate what they call um, Halloween. These are demons and witches. But these same people will say the Holy Spirit is not a person. You watch Harry Potter. You read the books. There are, these are real words. I have casted out devils. And I can tell you for a penny that they are real. And I can tell you for a penny that they destroy lives. Devils destroy lives. If you don't believe me, ask your grandmother what they have shown them in the village. Many of you are here in the city. You cannot go back to the village. In fact, your dad and mom had caught you out of those places. Say, you are from Lagos. You are from Lagos. Forget that place. Where is my uncle? You don't have anybody. You are from Lagos. They are not joking. Somebody say, you know, they played with their mind. When they play with minds, do people die? Can I play with your mind and then your mom will die? You know, people say it's psychology. <laughs> the devil wants a generation to believe that he is not real so that he can run riot for that. The devil wants you to think that the problem you are facing is a psychological problem, whereas you are fighting with demons and witches. The devil understands that if he can deceive you to think the attack you from another place, uh, he's going to win over you. He's the king of deception. Jesus said, For the thief comes not. But to build a house. <laughs> he said, but to steal, to kill, to destroy. He said, but I am come. That you may have life. And have it more abundantly. Have the Zoe. And have Zoe in full. The life of God. The Zoe of God. The life of God. Which is a real sweetheart. I don't know how to tell you that. In a more too shall we. Demons are real sweetheart. And devils have power. If they don't, Yahoo boys won't get rich. Are you following what I'm saying? For, 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 you to, for them to make people get rich, and they said they only used a woman, or they used an woman, somebody, and then it translates to money, is because there are a certain spirit that responds to the covenant of the blood. And those spirits bring those things. And bring them to them. I don't want to scare you. But there is an order and a life beyond what you see. Acts chapter 16, verse 16. You will see in scriptures a woman who had a spirit, but the spirit was not of God. Give me Acts 16, verse 16. Now it happened as we went to prayer that a slave girl possessed with a spirit of God. Is that what scripture says? With a spirit of divination metals, who brought our masters much money. If you think a profit, you will be missing it. Much money by fortune telling. That means this person will tell you what happened to you yesterday, what you heard yesterday, and will tell you what will happen to you tomorrow. So people actually go and consult her. And the owners, don't forget she's a slave. The devil is a stupid devil. I mean, you have so much power. Are you not supposed to have used it for yourself? Scripture says, first, she's a slave. It's a terrible thing to be a slave in the physical and also be a slave in the spiritual. This woman was operating under two levels of slavery. The first one is spiritual slavery to the devil. And the second slavery was that even in the physical, she was a slave. Somebody say, why is it that the poor people are the witches? That's the two kind of slavery we are talking about. Are you following what I'm saying? Yes, there are two kinds of slavery. See it in scriptures. There's power. What she was telling, if they, she was not saying truth to people, they will not be giving them money. The supernatural is real. There are prophets that are using things that are not of God. And they will tell you exactly what you ate yesterday. The color of your underwear. How does that change my life? How does that change my trouble? There's somebody here with white underwear. I know. If you know that, what is my problem? What is the solution to my problem? 
It's wisdom to understand that telling your problem is not the thing. Telling you a way out of it is the problem. Because I know my problem, you don't have to tell me. Tell me how I get out of it. Two levels of the supernatural. Can I quickly make a case for the supernatural? Is it okay if I make a case for the supernatural this morning? Is it okay, number one? The Bible is a supernatural book. This book is not Shakespeare. This book is not Macbeth. This book is not Walesho and Kachebe's book. This is the life of God. This book is a supernatural book. If you remove all the supernatural events, episodes, and miracles from this book, it becomes an empty book. Remove all the miracles. Remove all the supernatural. Remove the fact that Jesus was born miraculously from this book. It becomes an empty book. It becomes a book by another author. But the author of life wrote this book. The author of life wrote this book. Listen, and I found in this book, and I want to give you five things I found in this book that further tells you about the supernatural. I want to break it down to you as a teacher so that you understand it and you can run with it. Number one, as it concerns this book, so we're talking about number one, so <laughs> this is book, the person have mixed it, all right? They have mixed it up there, don't worry, you will get it, just follow me. Making a case for the supernatural, number one, the Bible is a supernatural book. And from the scriptures, I want to give you five, so there is five under one, follow me very quickly. Number one, miracles as a display of the supernatural. Why do I say this book is a supernatural book? And why do believers believe and should walk in the supernatural? Why? Because miracles uh, were always recorded in this book. The Bible is replete with accounts, replete with accounts uh, that serve as a powerful demonstration of the supernatural. From turning water to wine. Listen, if I can turn water to wine now, I will work it again in my life. Who we'll dig a ball? I will employ engineers, butlers, machines, everything I need. And the name of the company is PFA Wines. There's no need to pray. Why? Because the supernatural. How can someone take the same water you took in your house and turn it into wine? The Bible says, and they walked in the, in the Red Sea. They walked, everyone walked straight before him. My God. He made an highway in the midst of the sea. The Bible records and scriptures and history has told us of how Jericho wall was. Seven chariots walking side by side. We go on Jericho wall. Scripture says, and Jericho fell flat. Where are the robbers? The Bible says everyone went straight because the robbers caved in and they walked straight. They didn't have to climb the robbers. That's the miracle power of God. <laughs> How do you explain in your neighborhood? Mary is alone. I say Mary is pregnant. Mary is pregnant. Mary is, I have seen him by that boy. And Mary is a virgin. Number two, how do I know from this same book, from this same book, that this Bible is a supernatural book? I see the stories of angels and demons. Angels and demons. The Bible introduces us to the realm above the physical. Inhabited by human beings, <laughs> spirit beings, and malevolent forces. Devils, demons, and darkness. How that people were bent. And Jesus came. And cast out the devil, and they were straight. Devils cause sicknesses. How a man was mentally deranged when they chained him, he cut the chain by himself. Cut the chain by himself. And Jesus, out of him, casted out legion. If it was our generation, we would have said, would have introduced him to psychiatric hospitals and give him drugs. Many of the mental sicknesses are caused by demons. As at the last count, there are over 700 mental sicknesses in the world. If Jesus was to be alive, do you think he would cast out devil out of 680 of them? I think so. He will not, he will not give them books to read. He won't. Am I against mental sickness? 
I'm telling you that demons are running riots. I found it in scriptures. 80% of the people Jesus healed, he casted out devils for them to be healed. Right now, most believers don't even believe in deliverance. Don't believe in demons. I do my own. The devil does his own. And we're all happy after now. A <laughs> fake believer. You think the devil is like you? Jesus, God asked him, when in the heavens, say, where are you coming from? God asked him. You see, the devil you know, or you think they taught you, is the fake devil. Or the real original devil enters the presence of God. Listen, in Jewish tradition and belief, uh, the devil is not the anti of God. It's not the force against God. Nothing can be a force against God. He is God all by himself. He entered a throne. And God asked him, ah, heck, well, it's been a while. Where are you coming from? He said, from walking to and fro the whole earth. Sweetheart, do you think it was infestation? He was wrecking havoc. Scripture says he walked around like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. His principal work is to devour. Is somebody listening to me? Yes, sir. Demons are evil spirits that seek to, conceive, to deceive and tempt individuals from their faith. I found in this book again, Prophecies and Prophets. The biblical concept of prophecy. Prophets were divinely chosen individuals who received visions, messages, oracles from God. And they said it and it happened. Isaiah lived hundreds of years before the Messiah would come. And he prophesied that the virgin would give birth. Ah. You see, prophecy is not what you think prophecy is. Tomorrow you will get a job. That's a level. But there is a level that talks about the mind of God concerning the generation and generations to come. That's the level of prophecy scriptures talk about. That before the Christ had come, it had been prophesied it was coming. Somebody said, don't read the Old Testament. It's not for you. Excuse me. How will I know that this is Jesus without the Old Testament? If he had not come to fulfill the prophecies and fulfill all of the prophecies, I would not have known that's the Messiah. Any human being could have stood up and said, I am Jesus and I am Christ. But there were prophecies. Prophecies. That in Galilee, he shall come forth. How do I also know that this book is spiritual and it's a supernatural book? Because of the spiritual gifts. The Bible speaks about spiritual gifts. Supernatural abilities bestowed upon believers by the help of the Holy Spirit. Includes prophecy. Diverse kind of tongues. Working in miracles. Power. It's in this book. Discernment. The gift of knowledge. The gift of wisdom. Knowing what somebody has done. Power of the Spirit. The power of the Spirit. I remember many years ago, a lady stood before me. One man told me to pray for her. And the Lord said, no, don't pray. I said, why? He said, yesterday, he, she was somewhere. Ask her. Ask her. Ask her. I would have known I was kilometers away from where she was. But the Lord said, and he revealed it. It's the gift of knowledge. The gift of wisdom. And perhaps the greatest testimony of this book is the resurrection and the afterlife. <laughs> that I'm not going to die. I live by the power of the endless life. How am I sure Jesus rose again? Try and die and arise. In fact, to wake up is a trouble for you. Alarm will ring like, alarm will come like seven times and you are cutting it, cutting it. But Jesus rose by the power of an endless life. If the spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwells in you. Look at him and say, if the spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwells in you. That same spirit will quicken your mortal bodies. Are you sick in your body this morning? There is a quickening in the atmosphere. There's a quickening in the house. There is a God who heals. I am the Lord. Daddy, lady, I am 
your healer. I sent my word and he heal your disease. <laughs> I am the Lord. You're here. If any place you are sick in your body, I want you to touch it right now. Just touch it right now. Touch it right now. Might be in your head wherever it is. Father, in your name, the name of Jesus, I declare healing right now. You devils, demonic spirit, I would you bang! And I cast you out now in the name of Jesus. The spirit of affliction, lose them. Let them go right now. Right now. Right now. It flows, it flows. It flows, it flows. The virtue of Jesus, it flows, it flows. It flows, it flows, it flows, it flows. The virtue of Jesus, it flows, it flows, it flows, it flows. Yanama Shende, the Baroka in an ocean, I arish. The virtue of Jesus. It flows, it flows. The virtue of Jesus, it flows, it flows. The virtue of Jesus, it flows, it flows. The virtue of Jesus, it flows. It flows. The virtue of Jesus. It flows. It flows. <laughs> Only if you are not thirsty. Only if you are not hungry. But today, if you are thirsty, you will be filled. Not only today, every day. We are done with having ordinary service in this church. And number two now. I said number one is that this book is a supernatural book. Number two, God is a supernatural God. That the God of heaven has a nature and that nature can only be described as supernatural. Supernatural. Because you can't see him. Bible says God is spirit. And then I worship him. Must worship him in spirit and in truth. <laughs> He's a God of signs and wonders. The one who parted the sea. Caused conception. The one who gave thousands manna in the wilderness. Where will he have gotten all those birds to kill so that they can eat? Which bakery was he using for the manna? Supernatural God. The one who sustains all things. By the word of his power. If he says stops, we are all gone, sweetheart. If he ceases to exist, we all cease to exist. The God who keeps the one who molds. How is it that a child is kept in the mattress of the womb? Who supplies the food in the womb? What happens that if you put water on a child, the child dies because it suffocates the child? Blood suffocates the child. But blood flows in the mother and water in the mother and the child is preserved. There is a God who by himself has made an enclave for the child. It's called the womb. He's the miracle of God. It takes only a man who cannot see to say there is no God. It takes a level of dumbness to say there is no God. A level of folly to declare there is no God. I stand with the psalmist of old and I say the fool says in his heart there is no God. Number three. Jesus' ministry was supernatural. That's how I know. And Jesus came to show us how the God life must be. Listen, this is the life you must live. The God life. <laughs> Jesus had a supernatural ministry. So 
supernatural man. He was sleeping. Wind was blowing. Storm came and he was sleeping. I tell you, if they didn't wake him up, he would have slept through the storm. He would have slept through the storm. And you are shouting because there is a financial storm. You are shouting because there is a storm of uncertainty because you don't know what is next after this level. The Bible says Jesus would have slept through it. I perceive it was Peter or maybe Thomas. <laughs> Thomas said, Baba Egbawao, what's going on here? A Funan Zambar here. <laughs> the Bible says, and Jesus commanded the wind to stop. They looked at him and said, they respected him before. They had seen him perform miracles in Cana and Galilee. But after this, they said, who is this that natural things even obey him? Nature answered to him, who is this guy? He has to be supernatural for natural to obey him. There is the law of the natural. For you to superimpose upon the natural, you must be supernatural. Jesus said it. The wind stopped. A man was dead. Not freshly dead. This was not fresh bread. I used to call it dead dead. Or double dead. Three, years, three days. In the womb of the death. Jesus said. Wow. Our friend Lazarus. Is sleeping. If I tell this one that. He will say pastor. They have wrapped him. We saw it. At loot, they have wrapped him. <laughs> he came in. See, I am the resurrection and the life. Show me where you put him. Say, roll the stones away. <laughs> Lazarus, come forth. Like he was waking a child. Scripture says, Lazarus came forth. Signatures of the supernatural. Evidence in the life of, and the ministry of the Christ. I told the Lord. And I've told him since day one. I will not do ministry if it is not supernatural. I will not preach the gospel without power. I will not stand and declare to your people you heal. If you are impotent, I won't do that, sir. I won't do that, sir. And for more than a decade, he has shown that he is still the same God. The same yesterday, today, and forevermore. There are things that are not possible for the natural man. Jesus did it. Bible says the one I love the most. The boat had gone. And Jesus got there. They told the disciples to go ahead. And the boat had gone. Scripture says, and Jesus got there. And he couldn't find any boats. And he saw them far off. He just stepped on the water and began to walk there. He just began to walk on water. What is this? What kind of a man is this? He wasn't showing forth. He needed to get to the other side. There was no boat. He just began to walk on water. What is water that he will not obey the creator of it? He made all things. He sustains the whole world by the word of his power. Pastor Jesus just said, I walk now. And he began to walk. He only needed to even think it because it's the word of God. Jesus. What a man. <laughs> the apostles, disciples, and followers of Christ. They live the supernatural life. That's number four. They live the supernatural life. See, one of the things that got me tired of churches was that I grew up. And I want to tell you why I hunger for the supernatural. But I grew up in a church. When people are sick, we visit them and, 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 and just... When we say we pray, say, we are not really believing. We are just saying it. God, we know nothing will change or nothing will happen. That's the kind of church I grew up in. I saw people dead and dead in their youth. And then I read this Bible. And what I read was different from our reality. I knew I want difference. I knew that. And then I saw that scripture. That says he's the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. Then if he's the same, why are we those? Where is our signs? Where are there no wonders amongst us? Why am I stagnant? Why do I need multiple deliverances? Why am I going through pain and poverty? Why is it that my mom had confessed Jesus as Lord and is still suffering till now? Why? Because in that church, I'm sure if Jesus come today, many of the people in those churches would have gone to heaven. 
but they were not living victorious life on the earth. And I was done with that. I was done being bamboozled by devils. So I asked the Lord. So I asked the Lord. And he said, listen, I asked the Lord. And he said, the difference is the Holy Spirit. And then I searched in scriptures. And I found out that only once did they go out, the disciples, and move in signs and wonders. And that was because Jesus was with them and Jesus said to go. So he told the disciples in Luke chapter 10 and he said they should go. <laughs> and they went. And they came back with a report that demons and devils answered to them. But I found out something happened in the life of Peter and the other people. That after Acts chapter 2, miracles began to happen. Listen, dear friends, have you ever read the book of Acts? Have you ever read the book of Acts? Can we take a journey to the book of Acts? Because the book of Acts is <laughs> a compendium of the supernatural. The book of Acts is a miracle book. The book of Acts, if you can believe that book, you can believe anything. What goes on and what went on in that book is almost crazy. Actually, we will not have believed the letter to the Ephesians and to the Corinthians without the book of Acts. The Acts actually gave us this background story. How those churches were planted. Who planted them? Who were they? The book of Acts told us why the book of Ephesians seemed to be the most complex book in the New Testament. Why? Because Paul stayed with the people in Antioch for two years. He was teaching them. At Ephesus, he was teaching them. So that they were deep folks. They were not just, uh, they were not just uh, babies. They were deep because Paul had stayed with them for a while. But that's not where my story lies. Let's look at that. Let's take a journey together. Acts chapter 1. The Bible says, look, I want to show you certain miracles in that book. In Acts chapter 1, the greatest miracle was Jesus ascended on high and he went to heaven. Ah, I didn't get that. Do you understand that? Jesus just, and he went. And they saw him. And they were looking. If I was, the, ah, 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 ah. the cloud opened. Ah, ah, and he went. And when they were shocked, an angel came to them, supernatural, and said, this same Jesus who you see that has gone is coming that same way. I used to preach a message called this same Jesus. Never change. Still the same. And then I saw Acts chapter 2. Perhaps they were all together in the room. Acts chapter 2. When the day of Pentecost had fully come. And then there was a bang. Bang! And then clothing talks of fire fell on everybody in the upper room. Including Mary, Mary, Saint Mary, Saint Mary, including Mary. All of them prayed in tongues. <laughs> All of them. Hey, no, man, no, man. People came back and said, What's going on here? How? Who baptized them? Someone said they had to lay hands on you before you receive the gift of the Spirit. Nobody did for me. I was in my room and it came upon me. It can come upon you. And it came upon them, Acts chapter 2. Listen to this. And Peter, who was running from people, in Acts chapter 2, preached a message and 3,000 people were added to the church. Who does that? He said they were drunk. Say we are not drunk as you suppose. We are not denying that we are drunk, but the substance we are drunk with is not the substance we are drunk with. Acts chapter 3, drunk men, supernatural guys. I'm showing you supernatural. Because they had received the Holy Ghost. Acts chapter 2, the Acts chapter 3, they were going by the gate called beautiful at the time of prayer in the temple. Listen to this. That man had been lame for 40 years. Jesus saw him in that place. Jesus didn't heal anybody. So if they say your ministry didn't heal anybody, some people say they are poor gay ministry. Does not heal people. There are people who go out without being healed. Yes, Jesus' ministry did not heal everybody. Because this man was put at the beautiful gate every day 40 years. So that people can give him money. Jesus goes to the temple to pray. He saw this man probably. Did nothing. If you heal them all, what would the disciples have healed? There are some people God left for us. There are certain things that are expecting your supernatural manifestation. And the Bible says in Acts for free. Silver and gold we have not, what we have given unto you. In the name of Jesus, rise and rise and walk. Do you think that what he did? 
Bible says he took him by the hand. Say, rise and walk. That's all he did. The legs received strength. These legs had never been used for 40 years. Do you know how that kind of leg will be? Shriveled. Doctors will tell you that. Shriveled. 40 years. They received strength. The man was walking, they said he's not the one. Supernatural. Is somebody following what I'm saying here? In Acts chapter 5, verse 12, the Bible says so much great signs and wonders were done by the hand of the apostles. 15 to 16, Acts 5, Bible says, and this is so awesome, that even Peter's shadow began to heal the sick. Trace my shadows. See level so. Shadows. Acts chapter 5. Supernatural guys. Listen, whoever preached the gospel to you that you are not supposed to be supernatural lied to you, I didn't give you the whole story. He didn't. Acts chapter 8. Philip went to Samaria. Left Jerusalem. You see, if you had stayed only in Jerusalem, would have said that thing happened only in Jerusalem. Went out and went to Samaria. Bible says all the people that were sick were healed. Bible says, and I love this in Acts chapter 8, verse 4 to 8. Bible says he preached the gospel and he healed the sick. Philip was not one of the apostles, but that's what he did. Some secessionists told us that only apostles can heal. Philip was not an apostle. He healed the sick. <laughs> then the miracle of the greatest guy of the New Testament happened. Acts chapter 9. That guy was going. Acts chapter 9. To persecute believers. <laughs> but Quran is persecuting, you are crying. That one was going. The Christ. The Christ. The owner of his church. The Christ. I tell people, I'm not afraid of anybody against this church. As many people can live as they want to live. I'm not the owner. It's God's own. The owner of the church will always defend his church. Bible says, and the Christ came. And everybody had the sound, but they didn't see the light. Only him saw the light. Saul, Saul! Why are you persecuting me? At the end of that chapter, he had become a preacher. Supernatural. Supernatural. Act chapter 12. <laughs> oh, for time. Let me give you Act chapter 12. For time. Act chapter 12. A man stood and he killed the disciple of Christ. And he saw that the Jews were happy. The Jews were happy. Then he took another one. He was going to kill him. And the Bible says, and the church. Somebody say, and the church. And the church. They didn't cry. The church began to pray. That's why I tell people, when we pray, miracles happen. Yeah. Therefore, in this season, we are fasting and praying as a church. Some of us don't join the prayers. But for those who are joining the prayers, they know power is made available. Because the effective, fervent prayer of the righteous man makes the tremendous power available. Scripture says, and power was made available. Because of that power, an angel was dispatched in the heavens. If the church had slept, Peter would have died. But the church prayed. They understood the supernatural. And as they prayed, something was activated in the supernatural. They ran beyond the physical. Angels was really an angel. Just one. First of all, all of them were, were on failure five. They first all slept. He loosed the guy, took him by the hand. Even the guy thought he was dreaming. Peter was sleeping. The church was praying. May the Lord raise a pass for you when you are sleeping. Amen. Peter was sleeping. He knew. Jesus had told him, you see, for you to understand why he was sleeping, you need to have understood what Jesus said to him. At the, he said, even if I had said, he was having that conversation when he said, tend my lamb, feed my sheep. He said concerning him, he said, if I had said that, he will behold. Jesus had told him, he will be my sign. He knew he cannot die now. The guy slept. The church was praying, was sleeping. But look at that. Bible says when the supernatural was activated, Henuma Kapai, whoever told you prayer does not have power is lying to you. We told you during the election, let us pray. They say no, prayer will not do, prayer will not, let's go and vote. Have you voted? Listen, we prayer cannot do it, forget it. It can never be done. Ah, for, the, for prayer is the staff of the believer to walk with the Lord. If you find a man who can pray, you find a man who has the access key to the supernatural. When you find a man who can pray, you have a man who unlocks the supernatural like his opening pizza box. A man who can pray. 
And Peter went to where they were praying. Rhoda came out and said, I saw Peter. They said, people can even pray without believing it. But the supernatural was activated. Is somebody listening to me this morning? And this is what the early church looks like. It's not the place where sick people would just be lying. And people would just, sorry, sorry, oggy, oggy, oggy. Doesn't have a job, oggy, oggy, oggy. He's not married, oggy, oggy, oggy. oggy. We're, just, we're just mentally helping each other. We have become a support system. The church is a place of power. The place of the supernatural. When I argue, argue, and your story does not change, if I argue after one year, it won't affect you anymore. Say, Pastor, this thing you are saying is not working. It's not working. It's not working. Listen, when they say only fools, doubt proof, is because when there is supernatural evidence, his lives are transformed. It's a covenant with the Lord. Give me a person for one year, if their life is not transformed, take them away, take them far. It's a covenant with the Lord. <laughs> They were partakers of the divine nature. Listen, these people knew when Jesus died and the Spirit came, they knew they had entered into a different nature. It's called the divine nature. It's called the divine nature. What gives you access key is the divine nature. Somebody say, I don't understand what you're saying. You'll get it through that. you get it. Have you seen a pig before? Oh, you are born in Lagos. You probably did not. And on the island, you have not seen a pig before. There are no dirty places in Lekki. Praise God. Pigs are not here. Amen. Uh, have you seen a goat before? Help me here. Have you seen a goat before? You've seen a goat before? All right. Maybe you have not. Have you seen a chicken before? And beautiful. All right. There is what is called the nature of the pig. There's what is called the nature of the goat. It is not how they look. It's a nature. Goats are stubborn. Are you following me? That's the nature. So if I say you are, a, if I say they call you goat, they are not saying you are the best in the world. They mean you are stubborn. You know what I'm saying? If there's a nature of the pig, pigs are dirty. Is somebody following what I'm saying? It is not how they look. We are talking about nature. There is something called the nature of God. It is not how God looks. When we say we have been partakers, that word partakers means shearers. We have come to share out of a nature that only God possesses. So the question is, what is the nature of God? Let me not go too far for you. Give me first, give me second Peter chapter one. That's where we started from. Now I want to teach. I preach. Let me teach. Zevano Shiabalia. Give me very quickly, please. Second Peter 1, 3 to 4, please. Okay. Open it in your Bible. Life happens, right? Are you there? Are you there? KJV, please. KJV. Are you there? KJV. Read it out. Who has KJV? According as his divine power has given unto us all things. Wait. According as his divine power, the Bible says, has given us. Did he say, will give us? Answer me. Read that verse. That is your liberation there. Look at it. See, according as his divine power, the word power there is the word dunamis. Which means power that has the ability to recreate itself like a dynamo. It means power that re-energizes itself. Power that cannot be used up. It talks about miraculous ability and power. It talks about might and strength. So the Bible says, according as his divine power. You get the word now? His divine power, his divine dunamis. Has given on to us all things. Somebody shout, I have all things. Is that how to shout? According as his power has given unto us all things. What is all? Is health there? Yes, sir. Is ministry there? Yes, sir. Is grace there? Yes, sir. Is anointing there? Yes, sir. Glory is there. Yes, sir. Is it all things that pertain to life? All right, that means that husband must be there. Wife is there. Is it all things that pertain to what? Life. 
My car is there, if you can see it very well. It's part of life. And he said, all things that pertain to life and godliness. That means holiness is there. Righteousness is there. Sanctification is there. Is someone listening to me? But he said, he has given us. I have it. But this is where we miss the road. Continue with that. What is that word true? It means by. Through the knowledge of him that has called us by, to virtual and glory. Who is he that called us by virtual and glory? Jesus. So remove virtual and glory and just forget it there. Just use Jesus. Just replace it. Through the knowledge of Jesus. It means that you are not going to get into all things except you grow in your knowledge of Jesus. It means that what you have is according to what you know are in Christ. What I possess is by knowledge. Awareness is the key to living the fullness of life. If you are not aware, you will live in ignorance. And if you live in ignorance, you will suffer for it. There is no midpoint in the spiritual. There is no, I don't know. <clears throat> is it that you don't know or you are ignorant? Sorry, is it that you are ignorant or you know? There is no midpoint. Is somebody follow what I am saying? I wish I had this scripture on the screen. Alright, so, but, but you, you get to, to that point? So that continue. Now listen. Now when I said that you have the divine nature, you don't have all the nature of God. If I call you now, come. My wife has cooked and fried rice, fried rice and chicken. Now I now say, come and partake of this table. Will you get to the table and see why I pick it? <laughs> it's not his own. What they said before him is what he takes. That's what the Bible says. We have become partakers. He has not, we didn't say we have become owners of the divine nature. That means I am sharing out of the nature that God has. So there is no man who is omnipotent. There's no man who is omniscience. Any prophet that told you that come to me, anything, I will solve it, is a liar. He's a liar. There's blood in his mouth. He's a liar. Because he can only do as he has seen. The portion that was revealed is the portion he can tell. Therefore, let me give you a scope now. That's why many of the prophets will tell you, go to the mountain. Go and pray and fast. The Lord wants to see you. What they are telling you is that maybe when you go there and pray more, the problem will be solved. The Lord did not reveal any. Just go to the mountain and do seven days. Then the Lord can show you what you are going through by yourself, which is very legitimate. The closer you are to God, the more you can hear God. Am I helping somebody today? Am I helping somebody today? So what are therefore the things I can partake of? The Bible went further and said we have become... Now, he now said, according to his papa... Continue to read that part again. Whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises. Exceedingly great and precious promises. That by these, he might be partake us of the divine nature. It is by these promises that you partake of the divine nature. Therefore, the nature of God that you can partake of are the ones that are revealed to you as his promises. Therefore, if you do not know the promises, you cannot live in his fullness. Somebody listen to what I'm saying. Sir. What is the promise of God? See, I will be above and not beneath. That's a promise. The young lion may suffer lack. But I know that there's those who know the Lord, they will not lack anything good. Mark the righteous man. Observe the just man. For the end of that man is blessed. Yes. That's a promise of God. Yeah. I wish above all things that you be in it and prosper. Even as your soul prospers. That's a promise of God. Is that not so? For he that is in you is greater than he that. So when I dream and I see a coven of witches and they are calling my name. It doesn't matter. You know why? 
he that is in me is greater. I have a promise. Oh, I didn't tell you. Anytime I eat food in my dream, I order it when I wake up. Someone say, I'm on <laughs> It's been a while. I told my wife, we need to eat pandemic now. That is how to turn your dreams to reality. You know why? I am not a, some of you say, ah, on I'm just eating, I'm just eating, I'm just eating. I'm just eating. This isn't you are thinking that matters. It's because you are not a partaker of the divine nature. Whatever the bird eats, the bird will fly with it. Praise God. Are you following what I'm saying? Say if you're taking poison, it will not harm you. Do you see that? Ah, how did you get here? Do you get what I'm saying to you, sweetheart? Partaker of the divine nature. Take out the device. Somebody said they will sack you. Do, do they know who they are talking to? You did not reveal yourself to them. They don't know you. They, they don't know him. One man who was the land will be praying for. He said they were going to give it to another. I called him. I said, Ah, don't try it. Oh. Your generation may not recall. don't try it. Oh. No, 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 no. Kings don't beg, they make decrees. Bible says in Revelations that you have made kings and priests with our God. The more of the promises, the more you are able to grow. Our lack of awareness is the reason believers suffer. Somebody say, I want to lay hands on you. Somebody went to me. No, let me not say somebody. He came to me and said, I tried to pray for somebody to receive tongues, the gift of tongues. Say, but the person did not receive. I laughed. I didn't even wait there. I laughed. I was just walking away. He was looking at me. Uh-uh. <laughs> you are not the baptizer in the spirit. Jesus is the baptizer in the spirit. Let them come to the river. Let them come and drink as many as are thirsty, and he will fill them up. One young man saw me. He said, It's been three years. I said, Of what? He said, Turning. Turning for what? He said, To receive the gift of free. I said, Ah, uh-uh, three years. By this time, you should have been growing in the things of the spirit. He looked at me. I said, He said, Okay, sir. Should I go on fast? I said, No, now, here, now, today, now. No need. Don't go anywhere today. Here, you receive it now, now. <laughs> it's lack of power that makes us postpone things. You are healed. The person say, I'm still still paying him. He said, No, go. By the time you are going, you'll be healed. That is the supernatural power of God. Immediacy. Listen, dear friends. Give me that scripture now if you can. Can you? If you can't give me, our DJ is running to some issues today. Praise God. Do they, do they have you? You can now read, read it down now. Now, I, I want to just use that too. I've, I've, and precious promises. Glory to God. You see that? You might be. You see that English? It's not everyone who will. Might is a possibility. Is that not in English? You might. I decide I am. She remembered. She, she will remember. She was thinking, she's thinking, which one should I remember out of them now? I remember. I, I took a house in Elon. Elon is not Lagos. In Elon, you like breeze to come around you. Wind will blow. It's in Lagos that you have four buildings in a one plot of land. Or half plot, four buildings. And these engineers are fixing everything. So that when you are sleeping, you are hot. It's not that Lagos is hot. It is warm. Warm. That means wind is not blowing to anybody. So that time we took that house. Very good house. Wind was blowing. So the man stole some money. And they said, okay, sorry. The man had some money. They said we should not say something. And now decided that he wants to now build four flats. He didn't even build a bungalow to face us. <laughs> Block the wind. And when I get it to your house, I'm the landlord. Because you see, God cannot be in a house. There will be a tenant. I am a partaker of the divine nature. I'm not telling you things that are not really there. People know this story. They are there. I just went one day at night after I prayed. And I went and I touched the building as they were building. I said, You did you that whole building. I command you in the name of Jesus, you are stopped now. When I came into this house, there was no agreement that there was going to be any house. That's why I took it. So this is not, this is against the law of tenancy. Father, it stops. 
I assure you, they didn't build anything. She, you see, she finished it until we left. When we left, we now went there three months later. The old house, they were living there already. Three months, they were living there. I stopped the nonsense. I stopped it. One day, they called. My mom was going to have an operation and I left here. I could have told you when she's here. And I said, please, let me come. <laughs> I just found out that I was a partaker of this divine nature many years ago. I said, let me come. I went from Ilori to Ibano. Friday, I got there. I said, let us pray. Father, this year, Kapo Shili Adava. Open! Here now! Devil, I cast you out! I cast out anything. Those days, I cast, I can't even cast you out. Cast out any, Cast anything out! She slept, and I left. 5 a.m., I was already on my way back to Ilori because job is done. I didn't go home to visit them. I don't visit people. I only know Jesus. I so, so, you know, I don't really, I don't visit my parents. I don't, I don't know how to do that. Praise God. I'm not saying don't do that. Amen. Just let's continue. Ah, uh, so, I was on my way. She called, said, you have left. I said, I have left. He said, when I was sleeping. Somebody said, when I was sleeping. You see, when man slept, she said, somebody came and they took something out of my head. He said, it was so big and dirty. Till today, she has not done an operation. Book for operation. The supernatural. Let me say this to you. One basic Benny, they put it there before. They came to remove it themselves. Are you following what I'm saying? Yes, Everything you see, that lack of job, is not just normal. Everybody has finished school in your family. They are still the same way. It's not normal. Somebody has to stand in the authority of the Christ and declare in the name of Jesus that cause ends now. Cause are not powerless over the believer if the believer does nothing about it. Somebody listen to me. The reason we say cause are powerless over the believer is because the believer has the power to do something about it. You've got to do something about it. Our marriage does not work in our family. What nonsense is that? You are a particular... Can God be divorced? Can God not be able to keep a wife, a woman happy? No! You've got the wisdom of God. You've got the righteousness of God. All these seven broken relationships... Man of God, I'm not sure you are born again. I'm not sure. There's, you are not partaking of him. You have not eaten of his table. If you have, things would have changed. What are you talking about here? Say they don't like me. Somebody say when I speak, people don't like me. When I got into ministry, I found Colossians about me. The Bible says, and my words are with salt. No, my words are with grace, seasoned with salt. I don't know how many years I prayed that prayer. I don't know. You are a marketer. You are not using that verse. You will sell. The people you are fighting with, they have put something in their mouth. Devils have, they have put something. I once met a lady who said, if I can see a man, I bought to eyebrow and our eyes connect. Anything I say should be, we do. He has not met me. He has not met me. I will not do it. <laughs> if a man did, I will say you will not do it. <laughs> because there are powers. Stop deceiving yourself. There are powers. I will not do it. I will not. I will not bow to any idol. I will not. If you are not ready to die for this thing, we, you, are not, you are joking. No? The supernatural is a reward. Is somebody listening to me? And you are a partaker of that nature. The, the disciples of old, this was what they knew. If Peter were to leave and see us from the banisters of heaven, he would have been disappointed at what we have become. You are sick, you are not calling your pastor. You first of all go and use drugs. Is that what scripture says? Say, call the elders, let them pray for you. Say, the prayer of faith will heal the sick. That's what scripture says. Can we believe in scriptures? Can we live in the reality of scriptures? Give me Mark 16, 17 to 18. So that you can see that many of you are in 200 level. You did not pass 200 level. Look at that. One, two, three, go. Read that. Stop! Are you a believer? Is that scripture talking about you? Yes. No, do you believe that? Yes, if you believe that, can you say amen? amen. <laughs> Glory to God. So, what are the signs? Number one? 
Say that again. Repeat that again. Sing that if you can. In my name. Is it your name? But you see, I mean, I'm not speaking new tongues here. Do you know that your new tongues is even Shebe Shebe? Shebe Shebe since they lay hands on you. Let us pray. Shebe Shebe. Shebe Shebe. Shebe Shebe. Shebe Shebe. Shebe Shebe Shebe. And then when you are now on fire. Shebe 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 Shebe. Shebe is a Yoruba name for the snake. Leave it alone. New tongues. Tongues of fire. Tongues of fire. My father and Lord Reverend George chatted the man up. He said, I'm tired of your tongues on my altar. The man got very angry. Very angry. He was telling me, he said, but this is, I said, no, that's not it. He said, that's what give the, God gave me. I said, no. I said, my daughter, when she, when she was, she was so, she said, da, 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 da. Now she says, daddy, I want to eat. Your own too should have become like a language now. I said, that's what he was saying. He said, hey. I said, take it to God. That that's what we have said, all of us together, myself and Baba, that's what we said. Later, I saw his tongue. A kanama. Where I was coming from, when people are praying in tongues, they know they are the one praying. People have their tongues. But anybody who knows me can't tell that this is me praying. New day, new light. Emukianu vi hulushi hakakamu didi siatalea. Divu divu vahaunu kututu helia kaparia. Are you following what I'm saying? You got what I just said. Do you get what I'm saying here? Listen. Look at that verse. They will cast out devils. They will take up serpents. And if they drink anything deadly, it will by no means hurt them. If you believe this scripture, it will work for you. It will work for you. What concern me, concern I ate in my dream? What's my business with that nonsense? Oh, I heard. Pick your lawali. They went somewhere. They went somewhere. They were hungry. Very hungry. That's how they were coming back from evangelism, from missions. They now saw this what, sacrifice. <laughs> that there was no food. That they were believing and confessing God. They found sacrifice. A cup up. And everything. With egg. How much? They first of all laughed. I said, thank you, Jesus. <laughs> thank you, Jesus. Somebody said, boy, is the food of the God. Say, we are gods. They sat down. And ate it. I'm telling you, true life story. Ate it. You, you will see sacrifice. <laughs> you are a particle of the divine nature. Someone said they put something on your on your land so that you will not build. And you are there crying. Pick the nurses and throw it away. What are you talking about? A particle of the divine nature. There is a nature of God that you carry. No, you are not alone. His name is Emmanuel. It's not the name of a church. God is with you. God is with you. The particle of the divine nature. Say, if they take anything deadly, when Jebo, take anything deadly, it will not hurt them. They lay hands on the sick and they will recover. That's the promise. Is that God? You see, when I, me and God are talking, I tell you, is that you're a liar? Or this thing is not true? So one of the two. But both of them, I'm accusing you if you don't do it. So I'm not, there's no, I will do it and I must find what they find. Is somebody following what I'm saying? None shall cast a young. None shall cast a young. None. I've the one nobody in this church can lose their pregnancy. Nobody. See, I said it. The Bible says the promises of God in him, they are what? Yes. And amen. First Corinthians 4, verse 17. You see, as it is, so are we in this world. When I saw that scripture in my room, for the first time in Basin Road, <laughs> I remember where I was. I said, as he is. I thought of it. As he is, not as he was. As he is. As he is. How is he now? He's in the heavenly places, sir. Sitting far above principalities and powers. As he is, he's the reigning king of Israel. As he is. See, so am I. Ah! I started running around. When that 
revelation downs on you, you stop being worried, stop, stop bothering about things. As he is, so am I in this world. Let me stop. You know, <laughs> when I say let me stop, you better don't close your book. Let me stop. If I call him and I say, come, and he says, you know, there's a deal I want to close. And that deal is 50 million, and I need 50 million to close this deal. And I said, you know what, just come to my house. I'm traveling, but before I go, I'll sort you. And then he, he, I, I tell him, when you come to the house, anything you find in the house, please, take it. It is your house. Do business till I come. Now, and I write a check of 50 million. I put it in a drawer in my study. I then send him a message and say, when you come, sir, please take the check and go close your deal. I fulfilled my promise. Is that not so? But if the message did not deliver, it will be in my house. And it will be roaming around and still thinking, where God, and this man does not disappoint him. How is he like this? What's going on here? I have made provision for that 50 million. But the problem is that how he's going to receive it, the message did not deliver. Everything you need, God has made provision for it. And how is it going to be delivered? It's in this book. The reason why the message will not be delivered is because you don't read this book. If you can read this book and find it in this book, can stand on it. Somebody say, how did you come to Lagos with 10,000 euros? And this book said that it will supply all my needs. That's why I came. I'm a very crazy somebody. That's why I came. It will supply. Not a day will I cry. He will supply. If you believe what I believe, it will work for you too. It will work for you too. Is somebody following me? As we close, let me give you the pathway to the supernatural by showing you a scripture. And that's the end. And then you will go. Is that fine? For the next eight Sundays, I will be teaching you on the supernatural. My assignment in 2024, that's my assignment. Are you following what I'm saying? You can't miss it, service. You can't. You shouldn't. You can't. You shouldn't. Are you not tired of the way you have been, the level you are running? Elijah level is not a song. It's supposed to be a reality of what a believer. Is somebody following what I'm saying? Where is it? Give me act. Give me act. 4-7. Find it, man of God. They have returned me to see. Okay, it's, it's back now. Glory to God. Now, do you remember the book of Acts? I told you about chapter 3. How they hid a man that was lame for 40 years. I, I told you that story. Alright, so in chapter 4, maybe we should backtrack to give me from verse 5. So in chapter 4, they, they had performed such a great miracle, the people wanted to investigate by what means this has been done. I told you there are two sources of the supernatural. The wise will always investigate. They wanted to investigate. What happened? So give me verse 5. What happened? How is it? <laughs> How did you do this? And it came to pass on the next day. You see, 5,000 people were added to the church. When people see miracles, you talk about it. Now look at that. And it came to pass on the next day. Someone say it came to pass on the next day. That the Pharisees, the elders, what you call the Sahendrins, that's what you call them, the Sahendrins, the board of elders in the Jewish land. Rulers, elders, and scribes. As well as Annas the high priest, Caiaphas, John, and Alexander, and as many as were of the family of the high priest. You see that this is like a senate. They were gathered together at Jerusalem. And when they had set them in the midst, they asked them. Now, these guys know something we don't know. They understood that what happened to that man is not normal. It has, it's supernatural. So they were not doubting it. It's supernatural. But they understood something. And that's what we find there. Look at that. Read that together with me. And when they have said them, they ask, by what power or by what name have you done this? Two pathways to the supernatural. 
power and the name. The first one is the name of Jesus. And then the second one is the expressions of his power. There are diverse expressions of the power of God. And I want to unlock that to you. I want to show you that from next week. You see, it's a journey. But look at that. Now, let me give you a preamble. Do you know that they cannot cost you in your family line without using a name? This is the pathway to the supernatural. Do you know that they can't cost people, even in the occultic, without using a name? Number two, everything in the occultic has a power that backs it up. So that without power, you can't cause a man. Somebody, you see, every say, he just spoke. If he doesn't have anything, he just spoke. But if he has a power that backs his tongue up, he didn't just speak. He released something. In the occultic, all they do is based on power. And therefore, they will also tell you in the occultic that there are limits to power for each and every deity and God. So in Yoruba tradition, you will hear them say they went to Songo. But when Songo did, did not do well, you can report and go to Ifa. Are you following what I'm saying? <laughs> Some of these things are just crazy, right? <laughs> so it tells you there are hierarchies. <laughs> Aha. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what just happened? If you cannot, she's trying to give us the hierarchy in Yoruba land. Like there's Ajay, there's Emery, there's Eshu. You see, there are levels that if they first of all report you to Emery, they report you to Ajay. You are getting there. But if they carry your case to issue, <laughs> can you see what we are talking about? We're talking about different dimensions of power. That girl is keeps giving birth to each other and the children keep dying. They say immediately. So you know what they do? Ah, these are things that in Yoruba, they will mark the child like this. Yeah. I am telling you that these are reward. They will give the child a mark. So that if he dies, if he comes back, they'll use that sign to know. Ah, oh, they believe in some things. I am trying to say to you, oh, it's not only Yoruba. Oh. Ah, it's in Igbo land too. Ah. They know now. Ah, my guys are here. They know. There's a Madiwa. There are levels to these things, though. Are you following what I'm saying? And their level of anger is also different. Mm, is there no much? Amadiwa is the god of thunder. <laughs> yeah! yeah. <laughs> But that's the power dimension. Are you following what I'm saying? But there's also a name dimension. So that then they call the name, they invoke the name so that the power that backs it up can be released. When we stand and I say call that name, we are invoking that name so that the power that backs it up can be released. Is somebody following what I'm saying? When we say in the name of Jesus, it's not just the name. The name is powerful. But there is a power that is the essence of that name. That that container carries. The name is a container. Everything it contains is a power expression that has defeated devils. Satan himself. And every force. Even in heaven and on earth. So when I say call that name, what you see is a release of that power. Will you stand as you are? Will you sit wherever you are? And we just want to call that name.